Hello peeps, my name is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for SRLounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly ordinary to extraordinary raw edit featuring the SR Lounge Lightroom preset system V5. And as always, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create our effects using the preset system first. Then we're going to be going through the actual developed settings just to help everybody understand, well, all the behind the scenes mumbo jumbo of each image. That way, everybody that's watching, whether you have the preset system or whether you don't, everybody can benefit. All right, so if you don't have the preset system and you are interested in learning more about the SR Lounge Lightroom preset system, then just click the link below in the description. It'll take you right over the store where you can read to your heart's content and research all you like. All right, so let's get started with this image here. In this video, we're going to create a vivid black and white look to this image that we have here. And really, we could do a whole ton of things to these images. This is just one example once again. Let's hit I to bring up our information. We shot this on a Canon 5D Mark III. It was shot at 1 250th of a second at f4 ISO 100 at 200 millimeters on a 7200 f2.8L Mark I, not the Mark II. All right, that's kind of a mouthful. And it's getting late, so I'm having a trouble keeping my words not slurred. Anyway, I shot this out in Canton, China. This was actually out at the pier, I think in uh, Shenzhen actually. And it's a really cool spot. The sun just sets right behind the city and it creates this amazing look where you kind of have these buildings subtly, subtly just kind of outline. And we have so much pollution that it creates these amazing sunsets. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It creates, it's like LA. We have so much pollution, it creates nice sunsets. You gotta look at the positive side of things, right? I don't know. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is select the Vivid Import, and I'm gonna use the Plus Profile Adjustment preset. Why? Because with landscapes, I always keep it on. One thing I wanna do at this point is I'm gonna adjust out the dust. And don't worry, we're gonna reset the curve out to basically flatten it out, but it's not gonna matter because we're gonna choose a different preset. You'll notice that when we have the Profile Adjustment, whatever preset we select after that, it's not gonna change the Profile Adjustment unless we we choose one of the reset presets. Ooh, that rhymes very nicely. All right, so you don't have to worry about any of the profile adjustments being changed after you select that profile adjustment preset to begin with. If we select the Vivid Import without it, then it actually gets changed back. So we're gonna select this Vivid Import Plus Profile. That's what we would have imported with. I'm gonna choose a dust correction curve and we're just gonna go and uh, modify our dust. Let's get rid of these little guys. These little guys on the lens that don't do us any good. All right, that was kind of a sloppy click. <laughs> I feel like I'm drunk right now. I haven't been drinking, but I feel like I'm swaying with each mouse movement. Uh, we're just gonna keep clicking through and just removing all the noticeable dust at least. <clears throat> I'm not gonna worry about too much of the fine stuff. So let's just remove that and let's see how it looks. Let's go and reset the curve. Do we look okay? It looks okay. Okay, okay. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna select the actual preset we wanna use, and it's gonna add the curve back. Remember that the standard, the Vivid Import Plus Profile, this just uses the standard neutral punch preset. So if you ever forget and you just reset the curve, all you have to do is go into the curves and just select the neutral punch standard, and that's the actual, that import preset right there. So you know it in case it happens. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna go and select a different preset. Again, we can do so many things with this, but I wanna go with a uh, black and white. So we're gonna go with a vivid black and white, and once again, we can flip through the different versions. So we have a light crush, which adds more blacks. We have a heavy crush, which adds even more blacks. And this is kind of cool. It kind of creates a uh, almost a moonlight effect here, which I, I'm liking. So I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit so we get a little more detail in this uh, frontal range. I don't know what the pier, the broken down pier, whatever you want to call it. The frontal range is good enough for me. And we can kind of flip back and forth and see which version we like better. If we like to crush it, get more of a silhouette look. If we like to keep it lighter with a light crush and have more detail in the shadows, I'm kind of digging the dark, the, the crush actually with the silhouette. I placed this bird intentionally. I hope you guys know it's intentional. I placed it right over the highlight in the water to kind of outline its form. Look at that little compositional trick there. All right, so I like this heavy crush quite a bit. And what I'm gonna do now, everything that I do from this point on is really gonna be just an adjustment brush. So let's go over and do that. And then we'll actually go through our develop settings. So I'm gonna use a graduate filter. Again, with a half stop burn, I'm gonna hold down shift, pull this down from the top, just to kind of darken up this little, this little, uh, above the horizon point. I wanna get a little bit of darkness in the city too. Not darkness, but just kind of darken it down. All right, let's do the same thing. We're gonna pull one up from the bottom. Again, I'm just using this to pull the focus in right to our bird that's in this highlight area of the image. All right, that's looking pretty solid. I might just pull that down like maybe 1.1.2, just to fine tune a little bit. I think 0.1, 0.1 is pretty good. 
Okay, I'm really happy with the way that looks. We can always adjust this composition however we like. The one thing I do want to do is just crop a little bit to straighten out the horizon. And let me just show you our little trick down here. Let's do this now because it should actually work for this image. So let's click level. And look, it automatically levels our horizon. If I hit uh, R just to check it out, it's actually almost perfectly leveled. It didn't quite get it right on. I think it's a little bit tilted, but it's very close. And it generally does a really good job. So I'm just going to pull it back a tiny bit. And that looks solid for me, guys. Ah, for me, it looks good. I might change the crop maybe to a 16 by 9 and just see what it looks like. Actually, let's go 16 by 10 so we have a little bit more of our sun. I'm going to, yeah, let's pull that back out. Okay. There's our 16 by 10. Let's pull it on the bottom so we get as much as possible of our image. And I dig it. I love kind of having the, uh, you know, the horizon line is kind of right across the center for this, but I don't really care. It works well for this image. It doesn't really matter. You can leave it however you want with the crop. Um, if you want to leave it wider, that's totally fine for me. I kind of like it like this. It looks great. All right. So go with what you like. Go with what looks good to you, not what always, you know, the composition says basically. Okay, so this is looking great as it is. So let's just go through the different adjustments we made. All we did over here on the presets is we did our dust correction curve, removed our dust, and then we selected just the heavy crushed black and white. And then we just made adjustments to exposure and dragged in our graduate filters. So let's go over the settings. We have an exposure adjustment of 0.67 to bring it up a little bit. We crushed the blacks a lot with that preset, and that's why we wanted to bring it up a little bit, just to kind of brighten a little bit overall. Contrast is raised. Highlights and whites are pulled down just a bit. This pulls down some of our highlights in the brighter areas like the sky. And we're also dropping shadows in the blacks, uh, in the shadows and the blacks, which is kind of creating that crush. And we're adding additional mid-tone clarity, which is really boosting mid-tone contrast. So overall, we have this really nice, high contrast crushed image right here that looks absolutely awesome it has a great look we use this a lot actually for silhouettes and again with my silhouettes if you watch some of my past videos i don't like my silhouettes to be completely dark i like to show some detail in these objects because i feel like it adds a lot more interest being able to see detail in in you know whatever's in the foreground whatever your subject is so we leave some detail there in the tone curve we have that standard subtle standard contrast boosting curve right there we haven't added any colors to it if we wanted to we can go down to our uh once again to our let's see our antique black and white presets we are working with punches so look this is a punch curve so all we need to do is select a different neutral punch black and white and we can change the color toning so if we want to go to from an amber to a bronze to an azure, all these look awesome. The azure kind of works a little bit better with the moon effect with this kind of like moonlight type look. So I'm gonna keep the azure actually. But the amber is awesome. This kind of has more of a sunset look to it. Same thing with the bronze, a little bit more orange tones in the bronze than the amber. And the black and whites are standard kind of silver look. But I really dig this this blue look to this image. It has a little bit of extra vibe in that, that duotone black and white effect. I, I really like it. So let's actually leave it with that. So we're gonna add a little bit of extra adjustment there. Okay, uh, with split toning, that's, let's see, we didn't actually add any split toning. That was in the curve that we made the adjustment. So let's go over that curve because you can see that we have the standard S, but then in the S we've made modifications. So we're boosting reds. We're also boosting, uh, we're boosting blues, which is giving it that blue hue. And then we're dropping greens just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, actually greens look pretty much a little bit raised. Yeah, it looks pretty much right on the line, maybe a slight bit raised. But with the reds and blues, we kind of get a nice, subtle blue shift, and, and it's not too powerful. If you go blues only, it becomes very strong. So that's why we have reds and blues. All right, so that's enough for our RGB curve. Again, we could add additional color tone if you want. So let's just say, for example, we want to add additional SFX. What we could do is we can go in tone on tone, so we're adding basically one specific tone in the highlights and in the shadows. So we can go and select, bounce through between these different ones. If we select the blue, we get that kind of moonlight look to the image, and it actually looks kind of awesome. So maybe I'll just keep. It goes along very well with our, you see, we accidentally backed our way into a really cool mixology. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Okay, I'm going to leave it on here because we talked about Moonlight. This has more of that Moonlight glow and effect. And we'll actually save out this preset because now we've made uh, three clicks for a new mixology. And I feel like it's worth saving out at this point. So let's keep going down our split tone. And we have this blue on blue. We have a lighter blue in the highlights, a darker blue in the shadows. It creates a really beautiful tone on tone look to the image. Uh, in the detail, let's zoom in. Check this out. Sharpening. Uh, we have our standard settings here. It looks great. It's nice. It's perfectly sharp. I don't really need to add anything else to it. Noise reduction, I'm going to leave at zero because why? I like that little bit of grain there. I don't have any problem with that at all. 
Okay, we have our uh, profile corrections adjusted there, and we did make a level adjustment, but we kind of tweaked it a little bit back just so it was was more perfect. All right, so let's save this out as like a moonlight black and white silhouette look. So I'm gonna go up to my mixology, and just for the sake of saving it, let's just hit plus to create a new preset. I'm gonna check all. Once again, we're gonna deselect white balance, we're gonna deselect exposure, we're going to deselect lens corrections and select lens. But actually, we don't need any of that stuff because we used the uh, what should we call it? We used the uh, the automatic the profile correction in the preset. We can leave lens vidani because we didn't make any adjustments to it. So let's just leave it there because it's not going to hurt us either way. We're going to turn off calibration as well because we don't want to mess that up if we ever do have a calibration there. Okay, so let's call this. We're going to put this in my mixology. We're going to call this. Uh, let's go zero three. We're going to call it moonlight crushed black and white create and there's our new preset call it whatever you want save it don't save it it doesn't matter guys it's really up to you all right so that's it for our image let's go ahead and check out the before by hitting backslash check out the after we have this cool black and white moonlight effect by using our curve and one special effects color preset uh, and it was basically I think it was three clicks we had a import we modified our curve, and then we added special effects. I don't think we had any additional adjustment adjustments. So nice job, everybody. We are done with this image, and I'll see you all in the next video.